Zig, a general purpose programming language recently made popular by Bun, is a blazingly fast programming language. Go, it's pretty easy. And it's fast. Node. All right, so yes, we are gonna do this. A menage a trois of languages. Zig, Go, Node, head to head to head. And we're gonna see which one really and truly is blazingly fast. If you have a guess, why don't you guess it right now in the comments, okay? Put it out there in the universe and let's see if you're right or you're wrong. And we're gonna have a guest appearance by Bun, the most blazingly fast JavaScript environment of all time. So for those that haven't seen my previous video, I made a fairly simple experiment in which every request comes with a JSON payload. I store that in a queue in order of the requests that are received, and the head of the queue represents the oldest item in the queue. No item in the queue would exceed 10 seconds. That means that the length of the queue represents how many requests have been made over the last 10 seconds. It, it's a nice way to be able to have like a nice moving average. And it also makes it so that garbage collection is like a real problem or can be problematic. So I felt like this was a fairly nice test to really uh, accent A, the difference between Go and Node, but also B, the difference between Zig and Go. And of course, we're gonna have to have the guest star bun, the hottest, the greatest JavaScript environment ever make a guest appearance. And I do have two observations I'd like to make make about it. And I think it'll be quite surprising when you see the results. But before I show you the results, I did want to discuss a little bit about just the development of it all. I find that Zig is actually a pretty fun language to work with. But man, I was encumbered by some seg faults that can be a bit of a drag kind of dealing with. But it has a decent set of primitives that were available, including a queue that was already created and mutexes and all the things you kind of need. Did I say mutex? Mutacy that you kind of need to be able to create these programs. Now, obviously with no package manager meant I had to like copy and paste Apple Pie, the HTTP server from GitHub onto my system and kind of make it all work together. Ugh. So just using Go, obviously much better experience just due to its maturity. And not only that, but Go is also just, again, such a dang simple language. It took me an hour to get everything up and running, built the linked list, did all of that, made sure it's all working, even built the entire server first try and it actually ran and worked first try i get it you didn't come here to you know hear my thoughts on a programming language you came here for the deets so let's do this okay so i did just spend what feels like an hour actually collecting the data that is required for this experiment i did exactly kind of what i talked about i made three machines request a hundred connections at once and sustain it for as long as they can seeing how big the queue can get in actually four different languages. Yeah, we do have a guest appearance coming up. And you might be a bit surprised at this guest and its performance. And so, yes, I also did that with 200 concurrent connections and 300 concurrent connections, and then just measured how much was in the queue over the course of 100 seconds. And then lastly, I will go over what Bun did because it was incredible. All right, so the first graph is 100 concurrent connections in Zig, Go, Node, and the green line in Rust. And now what you'll notice, of course, is Node trailing up the back end. Okay, so if anyone says, well, I don't know if Node's not that performant, it will never be able to compete with these other frameworks. Okay, just stop. Stop with this just nonsense. Okay, it's just never quite there. Go obviously did better. And Zig and Rust seem to always be tied neck and neck. Now, I do not know if these differences are statistically valid. I'd have to do a lot larger tests. And I might want to try some different powered machines and kind of really come up and make sure I understand which one is better. But I would say overall, they're both really fast. So you're probably asking yourself, well, what, what, what is this axis? I don't, I, I, what are these axes? I don't get it. I, what's happening here? Well, the X axis is just samples. Remember, I took 100 samples over 100 seconds from the machine. The Y axis, of course, is how many items were in the queue at that moment. So the brown line, the turd line, the node line didn't Okay, and the blue slash the green did. Which means impressively that uh, Zig and Rust were able to sustain effectively 7.8 thousand requests per second from three machines that were requesting at 100 concurrent connections. That's pretty impressive. Of course, at 200 concurrent connections, you can see that Node actually started doing worse. Yeah, like not, not great. 
Actually, it's about the same. But nonetheless, you'll notice that Go actually started performing better. But Zig and Rust, of course, shined quite a bit. The ability to be able to handle these level of connections, they're just able to do it. Remember, they're sustaining over a thousand requests per second, and there is this kind of central mutex that I couldn't get rid of either. I did try a lock-free queue, but these were single core machines, so I don't know if there's any benefit to the lock-free queue. They both performed worse when using it. I do think there's some pretty neat exploration that could be done in the lock-free queue and scaling out to CPUs and really just seeing which one's better. But I think at this point, it's really just about which implementation's better, not necessarily which language is better. I think we can we can really say they're both great as far as performance goes. Lastly, of course, we do have the 300 connections. You'll notice that pretty much everything starts to actually get a little bit worse. They're not quite able to hold as many items in the queue or sustain as many requests per second. Uh, they're just simply kind of reaching their max on this single core slow CPU. But it's still quite impressive. They're actually, uh, Zig and Rust are really neck and neck sustaining that right around a thousand requests per second and of course node just doing great you know some amount of requests below 500 again this 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 idea that node is fast it's just not it's not it's not going to be fast and i think we should all just be okay with that just be okay it's you know, i'm not trying to be mean to you node people just keep saying that about you and i tell them to stop it but where is bun you say well let me show you a little action with bun right here Nice, it's it's working. There we go. It's look at that. Bun's maintaining it. Oh shoot. Now, if you do look at that, you'll see that there are 78,000 items in the queue, which is quite impressive. But what you probably didn't catch from that clip is that there were 200 concurrent requests. So if I look at my data over here, you will see that I have at 200 concurrent requests only 69,000. It does appear that Bun was actually doing better on Twitch before it seg faulted. But if you didn't catch it, that was when I was having 15 seconds per item in the queue, and this is measured off of 10 seconds. So it actually is a lot closer to Node in general performance for this specific case. Now, of course, I wasn't able to sustain it. I cannot actually say. It did appear to be slightly faster. Now, whether it was statistically faster, I couldn't even get the data for a t-test. But again, in general, I'm going to keep saying the same things. If you're using JavaScript, you're not using it for performance and people just should just not say that anymore right if you're using go you're trying to balance developer ergonomics and performance if you're using rust or seg faulty language zig which i i, I like zig i'm just saying it's very it's very easy to shoot yourself in the foot you're using it because you need speed and people need to quantify these values and really qualify their team for what is the best fit now me personally i do think go again still contains some of the best of both worlds you're going to get that better performance but you're going to get a little bit better de developer ergonomics but i think the dark horse ultimately is rust rust really and truly does become easier the more you use it like any language you become an expert but it will never be as fast to develop as it is for something like go or javascript but you can just achieve insane speeds so it does turn out that rust is blazingly fast and you should press that sub button blazingly fast because we're not stopping here okay i still need to make an elixir video for you i will i'm sorry forgive me and yes, I do want to do some more front-end things because it kind of seems like there's a lot of script kiddies on this channel that want me to do React, want me to do Svelte, want me to do Solid Jazz. Please! Ah! No! But yes, I'll do it for you because I, um, I love you. Yeah!